Hey, fix it, Tony here. Um, today, I'm gonna to be assembling a box, a drawer box. I bought this kit on Amazon, and it includes full extension glides and uh, pre-cut components, uh, blinded dovetail joints, so that's gonna be strong. Let's see how that works. And has a groove, came with the plywood, it's unfinished, uh, but I did put a sanding sealer on these components, and I will then assemble, glue it, and then I'm gonna sand it down and put a coat of polyurethane, clear polyurethane, keep the natural look. This is gonna go into a dining room cabinet where I had some open space that was creating some inefficient storage. So um, a slide out drawer is gonna be just what is needed. So I'm going to begin assembly. Um, so basically the only thing I'm gonna to need today, it's all gonna be glue joints. I'm gonna use a mallet to bang the joints together and I'm gonna use some um, wood glue. I'm gonna use a brush. I really wanted to use a flux brush. So what you wanna make sure is you got your drawers all oriented in the right way. I'm gonna do the front, back, and one side, glue those joints. The bottom is a floating bottom, so it's gonna stay loose. And I'm gonna slide that in and then glue those final ones uh, last. So first things first is you apply glue to the dovetails. want to get all of the mating surfaces glued up with glue. Now there's going to be glue. I'm going to sand this off. I'm going to put glue in the slots that are going to be receiving. any excess glue it'll just be easier to clean up later okay so now I'm gonna insert the bottom if there's a little bit of a bow let me see here I'm looking at it pretty flat I think I want this one has some blemishes so I'm gonna put that on the bottom and basically you slide the drawer bottom in. Okay. I'm not going to put any glue on this particular tongue because I don't want the glue to drip down into the uh,
sometimes there is variation in how these are cut. So this is a little bit raised. I'll get my sander and I'll sand that and it'll be, it'll be good. So this is the drawer. My drawer is a little bit too wide and I think because my dovetails, you can see here, they're sitting a little proud. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a planer and I'm gonna take this down to flush and that should be enough to give me that little extra clearance so that the drawer will operate smoothly. What I'll be using is a portable electric planer and I can adjust the amount I'm gonna take off and I'm gonna take off about a 32nd of an inch at a time and just go very gently. And if I have to take two passes, I take two passes. Deciding where to put the drawer is pretty important. You have to <clears throat> understand what's below it and what's above it and how much space you're gonna need. But I do have some constraints that I'm working with. So the first constraint, which is the most important for me anyway, is this top hinge. Uh, I cannot put my drawer higher than this, than this hinge but I also don't want to go too low to interfere with the drawer that's beneath it. So um, I took a, I had the other drawer in, I had it filled with the items that I think I want to have in that drawer. And then I decided, you know, how high from that drawer should I put this drawer? I know what's going to be in this drawer. This drawer is going to be, Kind of like we have family game nights and we play games with the kids and, and it's primarily card games. Um, so most of it is going to be decks of cards and um, card game related um, objects because it's in our dining room and we want to just easy grab, um, convenient access. So I know that this particular drawer is not going to have items that will be stacked up really high. So um, I can go directly beneath this hinge and that'd be fine, but I do want to make room. So I'm probably going to go about a half an inch, um, half an inch below this hinge and that'll give me an opportunity to um, get at that hinge screw, get at that hinge screw if I ever need to. Adjust this. So there's my pencil mark. This is gonna represent the top of the drawer. And now that I know that my drawer is, now I need to measure my drawer. So this is three inches. I'm gonna find the center of this drawer and I'm gonna be marking it inch and a half. Inch and a half. This is the center line of this drawer box. I'm going to use my newfangled marker. I'm going to mark the center line. Let's 
good to have a long ruler. I'll do the same thing for the other side. So this is my drawer glide. And I just have to mentally determine. All right, so this piece right here, this one little piece, this singular bar, this is the bar that's gonna get mounted to the drawer. So the question is, So this is the front face, and I wanna make sure that when this drawer glide locks into place, that the front face of this drawer is behind, behind this front face of this cabinet. So as you can see here in this small detail, let me see here, if you can see in this drawer glide, This piece that mounts to the door is actually behind this metal here. So I have to make sure this metal piece is um, just behind. I'll probably do like a sixteenth of an inch or, or a thirty second of an inch behind this face frame. Okay. So let's see if I can get into detail. Or so imagine the drawer is opening and closing or sliding out and sliding in. When I lock this drawer in, it has to be behind this face so that the cabinet door doesn't strike it. So I could put this edge flush, actually it's gonna be down here somewhere, flush to this edge, or I can br put, bring it in just a, just a hair, right? If I put it in just a hair, um, I can do that without a problem because I have a, a hole right here that I'm going to put my screw. I have to then decide where this, this piece goes. Since this piece is going to be attached to the drawer and as that drawer comes in and locks, it's going to be behind this bracket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this edge, this little butt piece flush to the front of my door, a uh, drawer. So now how do you, how do you mount this big long thing? Like look how long this thing is, right? How do you mount it? Well, you got to remove this one piece and the way you do it is on my particular drawer glide. There are these levers, right? One is one way, one is the other. So, if I push that and then pull, I can pull and separate this out. But I have to remember now, this end is the back end. So I'm gonna orient it to the back. And then I'm going to line up. See the beautiful thing about drawing that center line, that dark center line is, now I can just eyeball it. You see? So now that I have that center line drawn all the way down, all I have to do is just eyeball where the holes are centered. And that's pretty easy to do. And then here, I'm going to, again, I'm going to be using one of my squaring blocks that allows me to extend this front face upward, butt this up against this and begin the process of screwing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one screw there and actually I'm going to put one screw here. Um, then one 
one in the middle and one in the rear. So just three screws will be enough to hold this thing up. Gotta use these really tiny screws. So now, before I tighten this down, right, I have to know how far forward. So I'm gonna put my squaring block, hold it there. Push my bracket up against that. Hold it in place and take the screw home. Next up would be the rear. Now the rear, I'm going to adjust the up and down. So I'm gonna put it on the slot that allows me to adjust up and down. Again, I'm gonna center it. I can slide that away a little bit, get my small pilot hole, pilot drill. Don't wanna go all the way through, gotta be careful of that. Bring that over. screw these screws are sort of designed for drawers because they have a very thin profile for a head so it allows the drawer glides to slide past and that's it and then I'll do one more right here now I don't want to scratch my hardwood floor So I'm gonna place paper underneath. Now I've gotta keep be mindful of what's forward and what's backward. Now I need the other drawer glide. So what I installed was the left side. The rear glide, I tend to wanna put the screw on the up and down. The only reason is I don't know if my cupboard from front to back is purely 100% level. So if I start making my glides level, my drawer level, but the cabinet isn't, I could run into difficulties with the drawer binding as it wants to sort of shut. So having this screw here at the back being the up and down allows me to adjust up and down as well. That mark, that's the top of the drawer. So I'm gonna bring it down an inch and a half. And the reason I wanna go an inch and a half down is that's gonna be the center of my drawer in which I put my other glides. So I need, now I need to find a ruler. I'll be right back. So I grabbed my handy dandy combination square and now I need to uh, just remove the blade. So I'm just removing the blade. And the reason is, is I have to mark one inch and a half. The next tricky part is getting into the cupboard Gotta make this level. Oh, no, it's not off. It's off level. All right. So now, see if you can see this so I took all right, 
So this center line, I took the level and I went all the way across and uh, it's right there, okay? So that's the center. So now the reason that's important is you'll notice that in some cabinets, if it's not a pure European style where there's an absent face frame, uh, it's easy. When you have a face frame, there the face frame covers the side carcass of a cupboard, creates this space. So believe it or not, there's you know about that much space in, in behind here. So this drawer glide, Is going to mount here but you'll see that it's going to be sort of floating in midair and they make special brackets like the one that you see there but in this particular one for this cover style there's a bracket that allows me to extend and support the um, the rear of the glide okay now I have to make sure that remembering that the line that I drew across the line that I drew across is the center line and for the most part this bracket has a, a center groove so I'm gonna mount this bracket back here but I have to know how far out I need to go so that's yet another measurement and that is a job for um, a combination square your combination square the beauty thing of it is it has an adjustable blade so I can put my blade up against the side of the carcass slide my square up to that and now I have my depth so now I can go all the way over here to the rear and it's a little tricky because the camera is in the way up against here so so I got, let me see, hopefully you can see this. So this red square is right at the center line. It's serving to uh, do what? Um, to keep my square level. And then, you know what? I'm gonna need my other marking tool because it has a much longer angle point of a of attack all right so now now that I know that I draw a reference line I'll, I'll explain what's going on here in a minute as soon as I adjust my silly lights so now well so here's what I did <laughs> everything's getting knocked all right so I used my combination square to then draw a, a reference, a takeoff line. So this line right here represents this face, okay? Now, I have to make sure the back of this bracket is essentially on the line because um, maybe a little bit it is on the line, it's covering the line, because here's what I wanna make sure happens, that this particular face there's the thickness of the metal. This face is flush with this cabinet. The reason being is that this 
guide, this glide, this whole plane has to be on the same plane from the front of the cupboard all the way to the back. I don't want it to have any um, angling too much this way, towing in or towing out. That will cause the drawer to bind when it goes in. So it's important that we keep this consistency from front to back. So I know that's my center line. Uh, I'm gonna transfer that center line as well. So I use my square block. transfer it and then I transfer it back okay so I'll be repeating the same procedure I'll be repeating this same procedure on the other side so just to kind of help me understand here, what I need to do is the importance of transferring that center line was key because the bracket has uh, markings on the center. And here's what I think I'm gonna do is measure the width of this bracket. So the way I'm gonna do that again is with my combination square. I'm gonna hold this, slide it to here, make it even. Now I have the, th I've got the thickness of the bracket and I'm gonna transfer it as well to the front because I need to better understand where I'm going to be put, I'm going to need to better understand where I'm putting this. And I'm using the cross lines. So now, if I take this line, make it even, drop it down, I basically have the center of the bracket at the right distance from away from the cupboard and up and down. So the next part is more marking. Transferring holes, <laughs> we're working in a small cabinet, is really tough. So now, you're gonna get a close-up view of what I'm doing, hopefully. So I gotta find the center line. I gotta find I'm gonna mark that just the kickers. I gotta make sure I'm relatively centered. Yep, there it is. Okay, so the next step is getting my punch. The cabinet panel in the back is like quarter inch particle board. So it's not the most durable of materials.
This screw I can tighten. This was the first screw that I put in. I left it loose. Okay. I'm gonna put a third screw on the top to prevent, prevent pull down pressures. Why as well put all four screws in? Let's, because the only thing that's gonna keep this thing from falling off are these four screws. Now the next step is inserting the glide. Now I have to find the hole that I'm gonna use, it's right there to tie this rail to this face frame. And remember, it's not to this line, it's the center. And I drew the thickness of the blade. And that's what I'm gonna take it to. All right, so there. So now you're gonna see the vertical line, so you can see the vertical line that I marked, and then you see inside the horizontal line, that's the center, and I have to make sure everything is lining up. Good. Now I need to find a screw. All right, I have my, I've got my little screw that I'm going to use. Is the process you can see how this metal edge you can see this metal edge now is a little bit behind so wow so as you could tell you're working in a tight space and you have these little issues um, let me see if I can use my so I've got my bracket in the back supporting the rail um, the, the drawer glide because it's away from the wall and it's attached here to the uh, front point. So um, the same process is going to then continue over to the right side. I don't have the luxury of this hinge to make my reference point representing the top of the drawer to then go down and get my center line. So what instead I'm going to do is measure from the bottom of this particular face frame down to this line here and then go down an inch and a half um, so that I'll have my center line all right and then I'll just basically uh, pause the camera I will then do the right side and we'll come back and we'll do the drawer insertion for a test and you'll be t you'll be witnessing the first test live not live but on film and not edited out uh, to show just how things might turn out perfectly if it didn't turn out perfectly the first time. <laughs> All right, hang in there. I had put the right side in, same process. Um, it definitely was easier not to have the camera in the way, but I think you, you get, you, you'll get the gist. Now, the way that these things work, to put them in, uh, sometimes it's easier to have these things these drawer glides in all the way it all depends but it's just a matter of lining up the 
the drawer glides. All right, moment of truth. Now, when you first put it in, it's gonna be a little hard because it's gotta get past the clips, okay? Now that it's in, yay, look at that. I like, I like that a lot. Let's have pull it, let's pull my camera out a little bit more. There, now we can have access to our card games and we close it up and that'll be it. It always feels good to put in a drawer that glides in and out smoothly without binding. It's a full extension. So that means the back goes all the way out. I really liked this drawer. It really turned out really well. I'm happy with it a lot. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and like this video and pass it on to other people. And stay tuned for the next episode, which will involve organizing this box. Thank you so much.